everybody to another Moto GP21 video. We are at Mazzano. If you like these videos, please hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe, and don't forget the notification bell so you don't miss a video as it drops. So, yes, we are at the Mazzano World Circuit, Marco Simoncelli. It looks like it's all going to be dry and boiling hot, which is great for us. So, here we go. We like this circuit. People that would have played MotoGP, Valentino Rossi. We've done a lot of laps around this track. Mechanics and engineers hard at work sorting out the final technical details before the start of this official session. We're set to enjoy some great weather this session and the sun is raising the temperature of the asphalt. Now this is good news for the riders. They won't need to spend too much time getting heat into the tyres. It is good news, Gav. We do like the heat. So typically, without falls, we very rarely do that. But we're going to go with the normal so two. We're right going to go for our guided setup first. Setup. Change all of this. Lighten the rear dampers. Increase the weight of the rear end. Stop it from sliding out. And do the acceleration. Adjusting the final ratio. Okay, does that automatically for us. And then I just go in and change the transmission. Bit of an acceleration track, apart from the main straight that's down the back. Set that to normal. Uh, just for the purpose of this, we'll save that setup. That should be the bottom. Yes, it is. Great stuff. Okay. So with that being said, I think we are ready to go. We've got a development test, we've got the race pace. This bike is ready Let's go. The rider is about to get out on track. Let's see if he's looking to set a lap time or whether he's just testing out a change of setting. Let's get on track and see how we get on at free practice. Session coming so free practice has Let's gone well. Obviously, to get the best time didn't think we were going to be as quick as we are, but we have done a lot of laps around here in the previous games with the Valentino Rossi game that came out where you were part of his academy. This is obviously the track that you used to do as a second qualifying session training sessions. 18 riders in it, but only one will start from pole position in tomorrow's race. They will, Gav. Hopefully. With the sort of uh, lap times we've been doing, it'll be us. Nicola Antonetti's made it through to Q1 as well. So a teammate, we've got two of our team in Q2. We've done all of our development tests, apart from the one about falling off. I didn't think we were going to do that. So we're going to go with our soft front and the uh, medium rear that we have saved. So we've also got a hard rear saved for the race, so that's good. Uh, check the ECU, plan back three, yeah. Fuel... I don't want to play with the fuel, leave it as it is. Okay, let's go to track. Okay, so here we are. We're about to start our first flying lap of Q2 as we go under the Ocon Bridge onto the brakes for the first corner. We'll tip it into the right and we'll flick it left. Oh dear, a bit wide there. Germany has done a 145.1. Now we have been beating that sort of lap time in free practice. So onto the brakes. For Rio, <coughs> excuse me, turn five, round turn six, we are down by quite a bit actually, point four. We should be able to make it up though. It's normally my slower sector, sector one. Even in free practice everyone was going quicker but they would lose time through these sectors. That was a good line through there, nice and quick. Turn quite sharply. On to the brakes just before you get into turn 9, that brings you nicely to turn 10. Nice and now back onto the back straight. Under the rub red ball. Keep on it all the way, all the way. And then stay on it as well. Nicely done through there, turn 11, use the left hand. White signs, we're up by 0.6, which is good. We'll be looking at a sort of 144, 5 really. 
onto the brakes in the final corner. Mizano corner. Oh dear, a bit of rear end sliding. Use the curves on exit, they're not as rumbly. And across the line, how do we get on? A 144.4. That should be fine for qualifying. And it was a 144.415. That is a good enough lap for us. John McVie up to fifth. Messia and Pedro Acosta second and third. Is our teammate about? Yeah, our teammate's down as 16th. Okay. We've got championship rivals second and third, but that won't matter because we are Moto3 world champion already. Hello from the Marco Simoncelli World Circuit in Misano, where the Moto3 race is about to begin. As you can tell from the footage we're broadcasting from the track, we're looking forward to great weather for the race. We most certainly we are, Gav. Now, and the Moto3 As we look at Jao Messia, at we don't need to sort our grid. set up. up. We need to, to do our tyres. Medium front and the good old trusted hard rear. It's worked for us so far this season, so we'll stick with it for a moment. Got the one, the one, and the three to get off the line. With that being said, as we look at Jeremy Alcoba for some reason, a bit random. So we've got the mean in front, the hard rear, we've got the fuel maxed out. I'll press the wrong button. As we look at the grid, John McVie down in fifth. Good qualifying for John, as he's gone for a hard front, medium rear. Daryl Binder, his teammate in ninth. Our teammate, Nicola Antonelli in sixteenth. Uh, Carlos Tato is twenty-fourth there. Places on the grid. Riders in deep concentration. So here we go, pull the clutch in. Our rear tire is very hot already, which could be a problem. We come off the line, a bit of a slow start for us there. And the middle of the team, much wheelie. Jao Messia, Pedro Acosta have got by us already. Now Coble will come through as well, I think. Oh no, that's Gadriel Rodrigo, sorry. Out wide, going to go tight into turn two. Oh, and then he lose it on the curb. John McVie up the right hand side. All oh, we're going into Ricard, um, Rodrigo there. We're going to try and go round the outside. Oh, nudge Pedro Acosta. Rodrigo pushed us out wide there as well. Can we get the run out of turn six? We can. We've got it on Pedro Acosta. We shoved him out on the curb. Onto the brakes late. We're going to go. Whoa. Sorry about that, but uh, Gabriel. A bit naughty. We're going to have to go down the map in two. We're on minus 0.2 at the moment. Onto the brakes. Oh, I thought Rodrigo was going to dive up the inside there. He's going to still try late, but we'll get on the gas. Messias pulled away a nice little lead at 0.7. Let's see if we can crawl that back. He's pulling away from us down this straight, to be fair. Gain a lot of time back through that little bit of corner, though. Onto the brakes for turn 14. Take the tight line. Oh, little bit of rear tyre skid. Right hand side of that tyre is very hot. Tell me, see, is nearly a second in front now. Here we go, line on the last corner. Onto the main straight for the first time. We go across the line. Tell me, see, is 0.8 in front. Gabriel Rodrigo is 0.5 nearly. Into turn two. Out of turn two. Nice and easy on the acceleration through turn three. As you get a rear wheel slide like that. Onto the rakes by the light pole on the right hand side as you go into turn four. A little bit of acceleration for turn five. A bit of a tire line through there, so it's send us wide. Don't want to go that wide. Gaps down to point seven. Gap down behind us down to point three with Rodrigo though. Onto the brakes, nice and late. Try and save some fuel for the midway through the race. Try and see if we can close down this gap on Messia. It's down to about 0.8, 0 0.7. So that's just crept up all the way to nearly 9. As he goes down the main back straight. We should gain some time through here, though. AI is a little bit tentative more compared to what we are through there. 
Right on to the brakes, turn 14. As we go, oh dear, we go a bit wide there. Oh, easy. That's gonna, that's gonna cause Messiah to pull away from us. On to the brakes, turn it in for turn 16. Nice and easy out. We go across the line, our best lap of the race. We'll see his best lap of the race as well, which is an ideal because he's in front. He's definitely got the pace. No point looking behind you, mate. Look in front of you. Don't get why the AI does that. Looks behind them. At the moment, we can't keep up with his pace. We're pulling away from Pedro Acosta now, who's behind us at point eight. So we'll keep that up. That's a much better line through there. Got about a second to Acosta and a second to Messia. We're still not closing down on Messia, but we're both pulling away from third place. This is a much better lap from us, a lot more clean. Into the brakes, easy for turn 10. We put caught him up by quite a bit there. Hopefully we get on the acceleration. we could have also done with a, a medium rear that probably would have gave us just that little bit more speed to try and catch up to Messiah but we are slowly cool closing the gap but he does extend it as well on to the brakes turn 10 extends it coming out of that corner it's very quick on the acceleration out of that one Problem is, sector one's not our strongest. Not a much better line through there, picked up a lot of time through that corner. Quickest lap of the race for us, 144.7. That's a good lap, let's see if we can get in a couple more of them in. Round turn two, nice and easy. Turn three, don't get the rear wheel sliding. Oh, I like that. Onto the brakes. Turn it in, nice and easy, nice and easy. Oh no, that got that line up. That's not good, that cost us some time. Cost us a lot of time actually. Breaking into turn eight, can we keep the tight line? Not quite. I'm late on the acceleration there as well, really. Onto the brakes, onto nine, into ten, onto the acceleration, nice and easy. I think John McVie had the right tyre choice, if I'm honest. A hard front and a medium rear. We went with the opposite, and our front tyre's nearly cooked already. Struggling to keep the braking in, and just like that. Struggling with grip on the front tyre, which is a shame as we've just started to catch up to Messiah. Onto the brakes into the final corner. Can we pull that time back? That's not a very good lap for us on 145 as we make that mistake. That cost us three tenths of a second easy. Okay, onto the brake, turn two. Flick it right for turn three. Easy on the acceleration as we go through that warm light tight rear tyre. Onto the brake, slip it in for turn four. Don't get turn five all wrong, which we have done. Whoa! That's going to let me see her off the hook. That's put us in danger with Pedro Acosta behind us now. I don't think we're going to catch Messia now. Be fair to him, he's had the pace all race. We quite simply haven't been able to keep up with him. He's definitely been in a sturdy lap times as we go very wide in for a turn 10. That's let him off the hook big time. We're now half a second to Pedro Costa behind us. 
I've got 0 0.6 fuel which I could use if I need to but I don't think we're going to because there's no way we're going to catch a Costa now at 1.2 seconds in one lap we'll have to settle for a second but second's okay bit of a shame and I'd like to uh, like to have had a win at this track but quite simply Messier has just been quicker Pedro Costa uh, Pedro Costa has been overtaken by Gabriel Rodrigo now Gabriel Rodrigo is making inways for us he's at 2.2 uh, behind us now because we've got a lap of extra fuel which we might have to use just to keep the just to keep third place behind us at this rate Gerald Masia, oh, we did not want to go wide there we are losing a lot of time with this front tyre Gerald Masia is cleared off I think that's more to do with us going backwards than it is him pulling away whoa Gabriel Rodrigo nearly ran into the back of us there ok we didn't mess up turn 5 like we have done on the first previous two laps we should have a good run out of 6 Front tyres giving way. Nino, quickest lap of the race as well. I just noticed that one. Onto the brakes. Coming into turn eight, nice and easy on that front tyre. Struggling with the front. Definitely should have gone the John McVeary. On the brakes, turning into ten. We'll go down the back straight. We should be okay. We've increased the lead up to 0.5. Gabriel Rodrigo behind us. Provided we don't make a mistake in the last couple of corners. Messia can cruise to victory. We will take the second step on the podium. After choosing the wrong tyres. Use the curbs onto the brakes for the final corner, the final lap of the race. We come out safely. Point three behind. Gabriel Rodrigo is going to stay behind us. We're going to take second. Take second place. Good win from Messia. He did well there. So whilst we wait well for the deserved. To take us to park Ferme to meet you the very good finishes. race place there. Two point one seconds in front the of the rest of the grid. Final standings. So fair play to him for that one. We'll take second place. All important points for the championship that we already win. Obviously, we want to keep getting points because it's uh, there might be a touch of goes towards our team as well. Finish will earn him 20 precious points, meaning he's still in the running for the next few races. Celebrate with our team at Park Firm, mate. We've done a lot of that this year. So we'll go for the credits. How many credits are we going to get? Oh no, sorry, this is reputation first, isn't it? Reputation and then credits. That's right, 7,758 credits. Well, we didn't do the without falls. So, one week engine, so we should get an engine upgrade. Yeah, we have got our engine upgrade. Oh, we've also got a new candidate. Who have we got? Plus 38 engine, but down on everything else. So we shall reject him, we don't want that. Uh, with that said, let's just do the next engine upgrade. We've got uh, maximum torque increase or fuel consumption reduction. I think we're going for fuel consumption, I think. We'll add them four to that, yes. Eight weeks, okay. We've got one week till our frame's completed. And we, our next race is Mategi in the Japan. So, we will go to Mujegi in Japan. We still are 120 uh, AI difficulties. We're still on extreme. We've got four races left. Uh, an engine upgrade on week 30, 45, which I don't think is right. Okay, well, sorry, five races, including Mategi. Yeah, Valencia week 43, and a very weird engine upgrade on week 45, which is strange. Okay, so, 
Japan Circuit, Motegi, looks like it's going to be dry as well, which is great. Hello and welcome to Twin Ring Motegi, where we're all ready to kick off the weekend as we build up to the Japanese Grand Prix. The tension is palpable. Mechanics and engineers hard at work sorting out the final technical details before the start of this official session. The weather forecast for the session is perfect, so riders and teams will be able to concentrate exclusively on fine-tuning their performance. Yes, we will, Gav. And it's a nice dry circuit as well. So we're going to go with a normal track study, and we're going to go for lap by lap with the three consecutives. We've got time attack, clean lap with a long lap, and top speed. Top speed we should do anyway as we go down the main straight in the back, I thought. Now I turn one and two. So, let's go for, uh, no, not vehicle, geometry. Um, transmission, that's what I'm looking for. Up, up. Uh, it's going to be a top speed one, so we go down in gear six. Final way shape five. Let's go with the guidance. It's like there's a bit of excitement in the pit. Engineers and mechanics approaching the rider and trying to understand that one out. We're going it looks for, like there's a bit of excitement uh, acceleration as well. Engineers and mechanics approaching the rider by those. And trying to understand what to change on the bike. So, with that set, let's save that set up. Make sure that's saved at the bottom of Otegi, it has. Let's get out there and see how we can get on round Motegi in free practice Now, let's see if he can improve this time. Okay, free practice went really well. We're the only ones to get into the 159s, which is good. I think uh, John McVie might have got in there actually for free practice two, maybe. But they're normally about a two minute dead, two one. Nicola Antonelli's within the top ten of that session, so that was good, yeah. There's only another two riders that got in there. Nicola Antonelli and Tatai, 15th and 16th, so that's good. Pedro Costa and John McVie are the only ones to join us with the. 159. Here we are back at the track waiting for the second qualifying session to start. 18 riders in it, but only one will start from pole position in tomorrow's race. No, it's true, Gav. Only one will. Nicola Antonelli's made it through from Q1 again. So at least our teammates making it through to Q2. So ECU 2, 1, and 3. Let's just change to the old. Soft front and a medium rear. With that said, let's get out on track yeah, and set our Q2 lap time. We'll soon time. find out whether he's looking for a quick lap time or whether he's trying out something for the race. So, so here we are. We haven't set a lap time yet. On to the brakes for turn one. Bring it out wide. And then onto the acceleration for turn two. Almost get the rear end sliding, but not too much. Onto the brakes, use the different shades of the. Oh, I didn't think I was going to make that. I didn't. Oh, I didn't get a penalty there. We'll take that. Uh, yeah, use the different shades of the curb there on the entry of that corner. Okay, we're up by 0.041. On Messias time, or down on Messias time, should I say? Into turn five, underneath the bridge. Accelerate all the way through here. Didn't really want that rear wheel sliding then, but we managed to hold the speed up by down by 6.93 or 0.693. A little bit of acceleration coming out of here, and then straight onto it. Onto the brakes, tipping it in for turn nine as we come out. Try and use all the track and all the acceleration as quickly as possible. Use the motel signs on the left as you go round the hairpin curve. This is the big main straight I was talking about. We're down still by 0.817. to the brakes. We want to be in that 159 range. 
to have a look at getting a pole up. On the acceleration slightly, onto the brakes, coming into the flip-flop. Victory corner. Nice acceleration out of there as well. We're going to go across the line, so 159.6, that should be good for pole. And it was, it was good for pole, but slightly disappointed with the AI. So that's probably the slowest most of those riders have been all weekend, which is a little strange. As we're really in qualifying, they should be looking to go quicker. Hello from the land of the rising sun. Today, the World Championship is being held at the Mategi circuit, where the Moto3 class race is about to get going. As you can tell from the footage we're broadcasting from the track, we're looking forward to great weather for the race. Yes, we are. We're now out on the starting grid where everything seems ready. It's always difficult to predict the results of a Moto3 race, but the riders we're looking at right now definitely seem to be some of the favourites. Gabriel Rodrigo and Jimena Jim... Can't say his first name. Jacia Messia. It's not Jacia Messia. Messia, anyway. Is uh, finishing the front row. So... With that said, we've got a medium front, we've got a hard rear. Let's start the race. So we look at the grid. As I said, Rodrigo Messia, second and third. Acosta, fourth. Uh, as we go down, John McVean in seventh. He's going for a medium, medium. That's a. Okay, Nicola Mandela is going for a soft medium. That's definitely different. Carlos Tatai, our other teammate with a medium, medium. As we see the finish of the grid. The riders on the starting grid, the countdown begins until lights out. Just a few moments to go, and the Japanese Grand Prix will begin. It will, we've just got to wait for them lights. So, with well, that said, it's pulled the clutch in, get ready to go. As soon as the lights go out, we're a go. Not a bad start off the line for us. Gabriel Rodrigo is going to come by. Oh, we've got a little bit of a wheelie then at the end of that straight, that's not ideal. Can we get on the gas and the acceleration early? We'll go through the little gap created there. Back up to third. Got Messia and Rodrigo in front. I'm going to try and go through up the inside of Rodrigo. Oh, we're going to collect Messia. Oh, Rodrigo's gone down. We went very wide there with Messia. Use the curve on exit. We're up to first place. We've got Messia right behind us. Onto the brakes. Tibbeted in for turn five as we go. Onto the acceleration and under the bridge. The C is still right behind us. Going to switch the power map in twos. We're down on 0.1 fuel. Well, a bit wide there. Going to compromise our exit slightly. Onto the brakes. Tipping it in early. Turn nine. V corner. As we go up the very little straight onto the brakes for turn 10. Rear end slide on, hello Messia, just ram us there, why don't you? Didn't realise you wanted to play like that. We get behind him in his slipstream. Going down the back straight. Gonna pull out of it onto braking, he's gonna be up the inside, we're gonna have to give him the room. Can we get up the inside of him here? No, we can't. Can we hear they? Yes, we can. We're going to push him out wide. We're going to return the favour. What is he doing? I just say he's pushing into our wheel wheel. That's slowing us down. Okay, on to the brakes for turn one. We're going to go very wide there. That was bad. We're going to... Whoa! I thought I was going to run straight into Pedro Acosta. Okay, we're at back in behind Messia. We've got Pedro Costa right behind us as well. On to the right to turn three. Tip it in. Don't go wide. No, we're good. Round turn four. Lovely track this is. Messia's slipstream. Can we get by before turn five? No, we can't. We're going to try and go up the inside as he goes wide. Under the bridge. 
and turn six fully on the acceleration all the way through to the curb of turn ten, seven even. Oh, that's a bit, a bit tight into that. It's going to cost us time on the exit. Onto the brakes. Down into turn nine. Nicely done. It was a good line through there. Pedro Costa's now got past Messia. Braking heavily. Round turn ten. Nicely done coming out of there as well, eh? John McVee's in fourth. Good on John. We come down the hill onto the brakes of the monster signs. Thought it might have outbraked itself, but we managed to put it in. Be good to be doing sort of two minute lap times for the race. We'll see how we do with this on though. We can't be doing that badly, we're nearly at point five behind uh, in front of Acosta. Yeah, that's alright. Two minute one. Two minute point one should I say. Onto the acceleration again. That's why I use traction control too, so that you can get on the acceleration early. Although it might be a little bit more restricted, you don't have to be as upright to slam on the acceleration. Or not slam on it, but. Now turn five. Still at half a second or more in front of the Costa, so that's good. Breaking, breaking, breaking. Onto the acceleration again, under the bridge. Flat out all the way through here. That will ease up a little bit as we went wide. Thought we were going to. Use the kerb. Pitch in the tire a line. Onto the brakes. Oh, that's late. Right, then how we got that stopped. Okay, we're doing alright, it's still a point five. We'll save our fuel for the last last lap or so. Go around turn ten. Pedro Costa's got it down to point two. Don't know how he managed that one. Onto the brakes, nice and late, trying to get it slid and all oh, rear wheels sliding out a little bit. That's going to cost us. It's going to cost us as much as I thought it was going to actually. On to the brakes. This is going to send us wide as well. Yeah, a little bit quick through that. Cross the line, start lap four. It's still a two minute, two minute point seven, so it wasn't too bad of a lap. We can stay within those two minutes, we're okay, I think. Pedro Costa is still point three behind us. On some brakes late and then normal. That's going to send us wide. We did a little bit. Let's get it hooked up earlier. We've been a bit that penalised us a little bit doing it that way. It's now the point two. The sea has got past the Costa as well down that straight. Oh, that's wide out of turn five. Get off the curb. You can hear the KTMs behind us. Well, John McVee's made it up past. Oh, no, he didn't. I'm sure he did. Got a sorry. Yeah, he did. He's made it past the sea. He's up to third place. Flick it right. Come on, come on. Second to last lap, this is. Onto the brakes, turn it in left, turn nine. Nice and quick through there. Losing a lot of time coming out of the corners though. Onto the brakes again. Oh, Pedro Acosta, he's going to go wide there. We'll cut his nose off. And he can use the curb, that's slowed down. That's being naughty of us. We see him, Pedro Acosta, are right behind us, they're under a tenth. To the brakes, nice and late. Stop them from going up the inside. I'm surprised they didn't try and dive. Mm -hmm. 
flick it over onto the acceleration. Probably could have gotten the acceleration earlier there. Right, and back up to half a second behind. Right, let's get on to the brakes. Into turn one. Out of turn two. Switching the power map in three. Let's burn some of that extra fuel for a half of the lap. Saying that's so gonna send us wide, not used to breaking without the not used to breaking with the extra fuel. On to the ranks. Tom McVee's made up to second. Well done, John. Let's get a British one too. Okay, on to the ranks. Nearly half a second in front of John McBee. We go round. Onto the acceleration. Onto the ranks again for turn nine. Get on the power up out of there. We've got 0.5 plus fuel. So we go into turn ten. Very wide out of turn 10, but we could have the power for power mapping free. John McVee right behind us there. Switch it down to power mapping 2, so we've got 0.4 left. We do not want to run out of fuel. Onto the brake in, use the kerb. Try and stick to the kerb as we come left. And then through the flip flop, we're at 0.2, we should be fine to the line. Coming out of here, using the track. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, we should be okay. They're not gaining on us ever so slightly. We'll be across the line for another victory. While the riders A British 1 2. Fastest lap going to John McVie at the end there. Of the Moto3 race. Where did our teammate come? One teammate was 12th. And oh no, he didn't do very well at all. Carlos Tatai was 25th. Championship, John McVee's up to fourth in the championship, so that's good for John. This victory we get back to Park Ferme, celebrating with our team. Weekend. And if his team keeps working like this, it will be really difficult for his opponents to overtake it. Celebrating with our team again, this time for a victory. Last time out we were only uh, we were only second. Good to be on the top step. Obviously it doesn't matter for the championship. Because we are the winner. Reputation, sorted. Credits, all ours. Loving it. Just didn't do the clean lap with a long lap. We're at Thailand next. But first of all, we should be able to develop this. How do we get... Oh, we've still got four staff on frame. How do we get them to develop that one? Or can you only add them? Seven weeks at the moment. Add staff, here we go, look, click, 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 four weeks. Okay, so we'll have that done in four weeks instead. Okay, that's good. So with that being said, Thailand's our next race. If you like this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe and the notification bell, and I shall see you all in the next video.